We're talking about different ways to display data. And there are lots and lots of different ways. So we're going to look at lots and lots of different pictures that all represent data. There are two types of data. First, categorical data. This is data that breaks um, people into groups. So like your favorite ice cream flavor. You might have vanilla, chocolate, um, mint chocolate chip. Those are different categories. Or um, what type of pet you have or your eye color. Numerical data is data based off of numbers. So how old are you? What's your weight? What's your shoe size? So numerical data in general is just going to be numbers. And our categories are going to be things that we couldn't really measure. Sometimes we might see some numbers in there if they're broad categories, but in general, it's going to be uh, numbers and things that aren't numbers um, for the categorical. Numbers are numerical, categoricals are, are not numbers. If we think about um, teaching children, we start with categorical data. Um, and these start at a really early age. We can draw um, bar graphs and pictographs in preschool ages. And when we see statistics come up in all of our grade levels, they're going to start with categorical and then move into numerical around kindergarten and first grade. One of the first types of displays we use is a pictograph. Um, a pictograph is usually used just for categorical, but it can be used for numerical as well. Um, so these do represent like weight. So this one is a, a kind of like a numerical, our weights here, but we're splitting it into these months. So that's really what a pictograph kind of represents with those categories here. So in there, each picture represents something. So we have to be able to skip count. Um, so count by fives or tens or twos. So this is a skill that we see come up a lot in kindergarten. So in July, we could say there are 10, 20, 30, 40 kilograms of newspapers recycled. Um, with pictographs, you can use half. So if you look down here in September, that's half of a newspaper. So that would be five. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65 on here. One skill that we want our students to be able to do is if I give you this data, change the scale. So instead of counting by tens, to be able to count by fives. So in July here, instead of having one, two, three, four, to get 40, 10, 20, 30, 40, I could draw eight pictures and say each of them represents five kilograms. Another type of um, display we have is called a dot plot. And sometimes you'll see these called other things. Sometimes you'll see them called line plots instead of dot plots, but they're going to be the same thing. Um, so we've got these 30 students, and this data here um, were test scores. We're going to create this dot plot. Now you might need to pause it in order to draw this one down in your notes, but I have a number line. And notice it is a full number line, counting by ones. I'm not going to just use the numbers that were given to me in my data. I'm going to make my number line. And after it's made, then I'm going to go and put my, uh, I used X's here. Obviously, you can use dots since it's called a dot plot. And if you see a number come up more than once, you stack them on top. So this is a very um, visual graph so we can see where we have a lot of things going on. In this particular data, I'll put, point out a couple things. We have something way away from the rest of the group. We call it an outlier. It can be above or below. We have, here's my stack here, that just means that two students scored 72. We also could have one here that said three students scored 76. I've got one here for four, scoring um, 82. So that would be my mode. That's the one that, that has the most. There are more 82s than anything else. We also can talk about gaps. Now gaps are smaller than what we're looking like for our outlier. Our outlier is a big, huge chunk. A gap's a little bit smaller. And then on the other side of this gap, we have like a small cluster. So there's enough students up here that's not just one scoring really high. You got the small group of um, higher achieving students, and maybe they should work together on something on a project. Or you could even think about splitting them up and putting them in other groups to help students that are that are more here in the middle. But you got a good little middle data set up here of our students.